All right, guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked. This is part two of how to get the quality of your DSLR camera footage to look as much HD as possible. So I've opened up Premiere. I'm going to click uh, New Project, and I'm going to go set it up where I want to save the files. It's already set up to where I want to save the files. So I'm going to select that folder. I'm going to save them there. I'm going to name this uh, HD video. Click OK. Um, yes, I'm going to overwrite it because I've already I'm redoing this all over again. Uh, next, you have the option now. Most people should have a DSLR 24p option. That's the option you want to pick off this list right here. For some reason, I don't, so I'm going to use the 1080p DVC Pro HD 1080 by 24, which is going to be the closest thing. I'm going to name this sequence HD. I'm going to click OK. So once I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in all my footage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my, my opening and closing. So we'll scroll this to the side. So bring in the, that's my opening and closing. Exit. I'm going to bring in my music, whatever beat I'm going to use for the opening and closing. And then I'm going to bring in my actual footage. Now, my sequence is not set up properly um, for the DSLR footage as far as if I drag and drop this in with the preset that I've used, it's not going to work 100% as well as it should. So what I have found that works is if you uh, drag and drop, so this is going to be, this is the first video I shot. So i got to scroll through it, find the, the start and finish parts that I want to use out of this video. And then, uh, then I'll drag and drop it in here. And when you drag and drop the footage in here, the way my Premiere is set up, I don't know why it does this. But it tells me pretty much that you know this clip does not match the sequence settings. Change the sequence settings to match the clip settings. So it gives me the option to go on and change it over to whatever my DSLR footage is so it has the best sequence settings. Of course, I'm going to go on and change it. So now the sequence settings has been changed. Um, but I'm going to exit out of this. And when I pop it back in there, it's going to give me that same question. I'm going to go on and change it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find my, my start and finish point here. <laughs> This is going to be kind of a long video, guys, so I'm going to show you me editing this whole entire clip. So, Hi, guys. I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm going to be talking about shooting, I guess, high-quality HD video. I get a lot of comments from people that ask why my videos look so clear and they can't get their video. All right, so that looks good. So we're going to scroll back to, where, to the beginning here. Hi guys, I'm all right. Scroll all the way to the front. Right to the end. Proper lighting. Um, so we'll do a little bit of shots in um, some darker situations um, for part one. And uh, hopefully this is helping you guys out a little bit. And if you have any questions, of course, leave comments, uh, send me a message. So uh, yeah, we'll do some darker shots uh, later on this evening. And uh, hopefully this, again, helps you guys out. All right, so that's the footage I want to use, so I'm going to go on and drag this in. Once that's done, I'm going to go on and drag in my opening, which you can double click in the screen right here and you can widen things so it doesn't fit. I just double clicked on that, now it fits. This is kind of a short sequence, so I'm going to go on and change that up to about 70% of its speed, slow it down a little bit. And you always want to hit the ripple effect because that will, uh, what it will do is when you hit the ripple effect, it allows that sequence too and you're going to notice this is going to get pushed back a little bit as this gets a little bit larger it, um, mainly it makes the footage fit so as you notice that got pushed back why that and then I'm going to go on and link those two up and throw in my music except there's a certain part I pretty much use the same exact section every time so what I do is let's pull this all the way up to uh, we'll go here and my in and out part here and then we'll drag and drop it into here I hit B uh, I have mine set up I have my my premiere set up on Final Cut Pro shortcuts which is awesome so everything that I'd use um, pretty much I just use the slice tool and slice that out right there this is gonna be way too loud so I already know that, so I'm going to drop it down to negative 10 so it's bearable when people listen to it and it's not going to blow their eardrums out. And then I go into effects. I like to put in uh, a, a fade 
to fade into the music and a fade to fade out, as well as I like to put in a video transition. And Film Dissolvent is my favorite. So once that's done, I'm going to go to the actual footage. Now my footage itself is only going to be, it's mono, so I need to make it to where it's stereo, so it's going to be both both left and right. So what you can do to do that is you go into effects and you go into audio effects, go down to left, and then I'm going to fill the left, and now you're going to notice both of these bars over here. Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked. And it's a little quiet, so we're going to bring up the audio a tad bit in this. So volume, and we'll bring it up to probably like 1.8, 1 it's probably 1.5, we'll probably do the job. Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked. And today I'm going to be talking about shooting. And if you notice, I'm even a little bit out of focus. That is probably the hardest thing to do is get your focus points just right. When you've got a pre-focus, mainly what I was doing is my, I'm sitting right behind the chair. The top of the chair is probably right here, right above my chest, uh, right, right parallel with this part of my chest right here. And so that's what I use as my focus point. So like my face is going to be a little bit out of focus. When you do shots like this, it's nice to have a friend or somebody that can get your focus points just right so that you're as in focus as possible right here. I'm not in as focused as I should be. I wish I was a little bit more in focus. So, scroll all the way through this, and then we're gonna put in part two down here. Part two is where I'm going over a little bit the darker settings, so let's go on and pull part two in here. This is part two. F-stop is as low as it's gonna All right, and I know okay, I guys, screwed up the first get a time. Dark so. outside, so I thought I kind of shoot my studio so you guys can kind of see what. It. The T2I. Um, number two. There you go. I'm getting ready to start my second attempt. The first attempt I just screwed up. 20 seconds in. All right, and. All right, guys. So it's a little bit darker. Okay. And let's bring it to the end. And as you guys can see, I mean, the, the noise on this is just horrible um, because the ISO is so high. You guys enjoyed part one, and uh, there'll be a link to part two when it's put up. Thank you very much, guys. And I don't like how I ended that, so let's just leave it at enjoyed part one, and that's good. Boom. So now we're going to drag and drop that into the footage. So the next thing to do is that I like to do is go back to our effects tab. We're going to fill left. Double click on it. Make sure that we bring a volume thing all the way to the, to the all the way to the far left at the end of that clip. So if you've clicked on this clip and then you do this, what it will do is, as you can see down here, it's, this is moving as well. You can just bring it to the front of the clip like this, and then that's where it's going to start uh, the audio change. If you did it all the way out here, you you see this little diamond light thing here? That's where it would start. So it would be normal and it would go up and sound here so you want this to be all the way at the front so when it switches over it's going to the audio is the same from the previous clip in a manner of speaking and now we'll scroll down to let's see here let's go down to video transitions and non additive dissolve nope we're gonna go with the film dissolve that is by far my favorite and that looks a little short so we'll probably bring it up a tad bit make it a little bit longer all right, so this clip is finished. And in the last part that I need to do is throw in my ending clip. I need to throw in my ending audio. Um, and let's bring her up, make her a little bit larger here so I can see a little bit better. Of the, and then you can just scroll and make this clip a little bit longer because it's, it's going to pull off from the audio. And we need to go back to our effects tab. Again, double click on this because my audio is going to be way too loud. And then we'll go negative 10 on the audio here. That seems to be a good, a good number. All right, um, two film dissolvents, one for the end. And this is just blank. There's no audio in actually in this. I could unlink it and I could go on and just kill this audio right here. But there's nothing there, so it doesn't matter. I'm leaving it in there. Uh, and then next, what I'm going to want to do now that I've got my dissolves in there. I'm going to go back to the audio transitions. I'm going to add in two fades. 
and then this fade I want to start right at the end of this so I'm going to bring this fade in a little bit so there's a little bit of darkness as it fades out it, it look, I think it looks a little bit nicer that way so now I have edited and if you hit shift Z if you have it set up for the Final Cut Pro settings or if you're using Final Cut Pro you, shift Z will show you your whole entire timeline and then of course control A will highlight everything so that's the whole entire clip. So now we're going to do the export settings, which most of you have probably been waiting for. So we're going to go to the export media. All right, so I already have a preset. Um, if I go down to, I, I, I formatted an H.264. I've already got my 1080p preset right here. So again, I don't have all the export settings that some people do. I don't know why my Premiere is all screwed up like this. But I just found the highest quality um, one for me. It was the Android tablet at, let's see here. It was the Android tablet at 1080p at 23.69. But I have just made a custom setting. Now, once you've done that, the things that a lot of people do, you want to go down to your video here. One, you want to hit this max quality. Um, next, you want to make sure that your frame rate, your frame size is right. Of course, I'm shooting in 1920 by 1080. Um, it's different if I'm shooting in 60 frames per second. So, um, try to widen this up a little bit so you guys can see everything. So next, I'm going to leave that at 23 frames. You could just make it an even 24 if you want. There's no problem with that. 23, 24, it's not that big of a difference. Uh, the things that you want to do is you want to get your bit rate. Um, I do a, a 2, a VBR 2 pass. It takes a little bit longer, but it's, I feel like it gives me a little bit better quality. Uh, most people's bitrate can go up a lot higher than this um, on other settings, but mine goes max of 20. But you want to put your bitrate and your you want to put your bitrate at 20 and your maximum bitrate uh, about five higher than that. But uh, since 20 is the max I can go, I just left my uh, maximum bitrate at 20 as well. Um, in the description bar down below, I will leave a link to a video that shows you how to export your video. I think it's an excellent video, much better than what I could do. This is where I got, this is where I learned how to export my video in HD. So uh, down below in the description bar, check that out. And uh, we follow that guy's instructions. I think it's about a 10 minute video. It's really excellent. And uh, he explains how to export your video um, really well. So. Um, and then that's it. Um, then you can go in and mess with your audio and stuff. I leave my audio as is and no filters or anything. So mainly the only thing you want to really work with is your bit rate here and you want to make sure your frame size are correct and if you want to change your frame rate to the exact, you know, like I changed it to exactly 24. So now that that's all done, it's going to give me my estimated file size and then I need to go put it in the proper folder. So let's see here and part one. So this is part one and then I'm just going to save it. Um, HD, we'll name it HD video, and I'm going to click save, make sure that these arrow points are set so that they are getting the whole entire video sometimes. I don't know why, but they'll set it like this. So it will export up to like this point in the video where and I want it to export the whole entire video, which is, looks like 11 minutes and 30 seconds. So we'll just hit export, and now it's going to export. And that is how I get the HD, or that's my HD settings for exporting out of Premiere. It's a little bit different for Final Cut Pro and Sony Vegas, I'm pretty sure. I've never used Sony Vegas and Final Cut Pro. I stopped using um, years ago, um, about a year and a half ago. So hopefully part two helped you guys out. If you got any questions, feel free to leave a comment, shoot me a message. Um, I'm sure there are things I could do that would make my video look nicer um, that I skipped here. So if you are more knowledgeable about this, then please uh, leave a comment or shoot me a message if you have the time. I, I'm always willing to learn. That's, uh, that's half the battle here on YouTube. I'm trying to learn and teach what I learn to people that don't know what I know. Anyways, have a great day, guys. Check us out on Facebook at David D. Images and follow us on Twitter at Media Unlocked.